Okay, 2025 Honda CRF 450R intro. You know who this is. Look at this guy right uh, here. Ah, Terry Bonato. Terry Bonato. Uh, Trey Kennard, team consultant and test rider. Yeah, that's what my contract says. Wow. Yeah. I uh, like the consultant part. It makes me seem more <laughs> important. <laughs> okay, so you had a big help in this production 2025 machine. I think a lot of people just think of you as a race team guy, but you've been riding this thing for a couple years now. So give us a little bit about the background with you and this new Honda CRF over the Arctic. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's there's certainly been a lot more collaboration with the race team and the uh, production development team, uh, both Japan and uh, American Honda. Um, so it's exciting for me, you know, I, I, the thing that excites me the most is from this 25 direction, we've been able to inspire things, changes that have been made in the race team. And really when we started making those changes is when we started having the most success, uh, specifically with Chase Sexton winning the Supercross Championship last year, Jet having the first season, and then this year Jet winning the Supercross Championship. Forget about the Supercross Motocross Championship too. So, um, so it's cool for me to see the changes that have happened on the production side, kind of got flushed out in, in our process, and then when it came time to really build this motorcycle, um, they're there and race proven. So, uh, there's, I mean. I am certainly involved, um, and I've been more involved, heavily involved in the production side in the last probably two, three years. Um, but there's other people involved as well. Uh, yourself, uh, you were involved uh, in the beginning. Um, you know, we have our production team uh, here in America uh, with several riders, uh, Michael Byrne, Dre Turks, uh, we've had some other guys as well. Um, so there's, there's a lot of hands that have been had a part in this motorcycle. Um, but what I'm most grateful for, I guess, is, is to say that there's a, a bigger and a better collaboration between the race team, our production development team in Japan. And um, I think that's that's something that can continue to grow. Um, and to see the gains that we've made in the last uh, two years, in my opinion, has been a, a really big shift. What's crazy to me, so, been a part of a lot of different manufacturers production testing processes you don't see the crossover that much from race team test guy to production test guy so um, I know that's important for you just like you kind of explained to me but I think it's unique by Honda to try to use you in both angles um, it only helps the race team like you said and obviously it's going to help production side and I think it holds a little bit more clout and weight when you have a guy like you testing and the production piece comes out and it turns out to be good. So I think you've ridden enough to be like, okay, I'm on the production side of things, I gotta change my thought process. So that brings me to that point is like, how much did you have to rethink when you went to the production side versus race team side? Did you have to totally rewire yourself? I'm definitely cautious, you know. Um, you know, one of the first models I helped with was in 22, um, that's the 250R and uh, two, CRF 250R and um, I've got a lot of complaints about a stiff fork yep. um, and so I've, I've really tried to rein that in and um, you know because um, my racing experience the the speed is high uh, the forces are high and so that that requires a higher damping force a lot of times and so I've really do you back your riding down when you do production testing? I don't back my riding down because I feel like um, I need to be the guy that pushes the motorcycle. Okay. So we've got different skill level riders and, and hopefully what, what happens in that process is that you know maybe the guy that's uh, your kind of vet level or your kind of more intermediate level can go, no, this feels stiff or whatever. So I try to lean on that type of tester to make sure that I'm not going too far out of the box as far as harshness or stiffness. Um, but I mean, so far what I've learned is, is really kind of a good bike translate to everything, yep. to all riders, so. Um, but it, that is that has been a learning curve and something I've tried to be cautious of. Um, but I think it's, it's benefited us, uh, both on the race team and the development side, to to have uh, our race team involved. Uh, so I, I think it's a, a good thing. I think it's probably needs to continue to be refined. Um, and the more experience I have on the production side, I think, I think probably the more you do something, the better you get. So hopefully that continues to grow.
What do you prefer? I know I've done some racing stuff back in the day, but I know you still like to ride Supercross. You still ride at a high level. I saw the whip photos today, which uh, that's a whole nother. We can talk about that later. But like for me, is there something more rewarding than the other? Is production more rewarding or is the racing side more rewarding for you? Um, it's it's both. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, for this motorcycle, I've had probably the biggest hand I've ever had in, in a production motorcycle. And, you know, the, the shootouts will kind of be the the tell you know oh boy you, you know if i if it we, doesn't do good well are you gonna be okay if we do I? if we do terrible <laughs> maybe hide the toasters hide the knives but um but i don't know it, it'll be it would be really cool you know if we do uh better than we've done in in the past few years and um, just to know that hey we're, we're making steps in the right direction and um, we're putting together a, a good safe fun motorcycle so that would be rewarding I mean it, it is rewarding on the racing side I mean we've had an incredible last two years yeah. um, so um, that's that's really exciting to be a part of um, but I think more than anything racing production the most fulfilling thing to me is just getting to ride a bike yeah um, that's been a lot of fun and I've really learned to enjoy the development process and, and uh, constantly trying to how, how do we do better you know even today Hearing the comments of uh, the riders, it just you, your head starts moving. You know, how do we, how do we move forward here? What can we do as we move forward? And um, how, how are we going to make this bike even better? You know, so um, I enjoy that. It, it really keeps me occupied and um, you know gives me something to kind of chase. So, leading from your racing career, now doing this. Did you ever think that you were going to be a, a test guy? Is it something that you thought about once you retired? Because a lot of you guys, I want to say you guys, that high level riders, got paid lots of money, won championships, they kind of go rogue for a while, they just ghost everyone for a bit. You didn't really do that, like, you got back in, in the trenches, you started working around, so is it something that you thought you were going to do, is it something that you planned? I didn't really plan on it, honestly, um, you know, I kind of had my um, rider advocacy I was kind of working on, and that really went south pretty quick, um, and I was kind of like a little bit jaded, you know, I kind of was a little bit disappointed on how that that project went, um, but I, I wasn't really interested. Uh, Kehoe actually reached out to me right after uh, the end of my career and asked me if I was interested, and I kind of said, I don't think this is right for me, and called me a year later, and I said, yeah, hey, I'll go ride the bike and just see how it goes, and uh, I think I had so much fun riding, Yeah. and it brought me back to kind of that being involved with the team and and uh, you get the same kind of feeling i get the same kind of feeling yeah, yeah. and it, it's different for sure but it, it's also the same you know we're, we're all striving towards the same goal and um i really miss that uh kind of when i took a year hiatus from work i guess yeah. um it's just really really fun to kind of strive towards something and then work together with a group and um yeah, it's really hard to race for so long and then just shut that off. Yeah. You, know, you really feel like a piece of you is missing in a way. So, I just think a lot of these guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, uh, you're doing it at a high level. You have all this stress, all this pressure, and then once you're done, you just gotta like unle like just kind of calm down and let it all go for a little while, and then you kind of miss the reasons why you rode a dirt bike. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think one of the, the first times I actually rode after I retired, you know, when I stopped racing, I was really beat up. Um, you know, I had some head injuries at the end, so I, you know, I just didn't really have the time for the, to properly heal. A bunch of stuff kind of messed up. I got the metal taken out of my back and my head properly healed and uh, actually went to FCA camp in Minnesota and it was on this sick track. And I was just coaching that week, but I ended up uh, calling Max from Fly and be like, hey dude, can I get some gear here? Because the track just looked fun. Yeah. And I just borrowed a bike and I rode and I, I just had such a good time. I haven't ridden a motorcycle and had a good time in like... It's crazy to think about like, you're racing Supercross, Motocross, getting paid. Us fans think, oh, you gotta be having a blast, but it's quite not, it's not like that, right? It's it's a grind and, and year after year, especially for me, you know, I was always kind of coming back. And so it was like, it was always, I never really reached that plateau where you're kind of like, feel good with where I'm at, my fitness, my, my body health. Uh, never really got to ride that wave, you know, I was always kind of like, Rebuilding. okay, I was out yeah. for six months and now I'm gonna try to get back and it, it just, it really kind of took a toll on me. Um, and so I, I never really got to get into the, the flow of things enough to really enjoy that. 
Um, and, and I think too, it was a different time in the sport. Like it was kind of celebrated to be like, you know, the, the robot and, and the guy that was, you know, you, I don't have to explain that, you know, yeah. or I think now it's a little bit different. Like there's still the seriousness, but we're really enjoying more of the personality of things. And so I think a lot of the guys in my era didn't really have a ton of fun. Well, it's crazy to me. You walk by the Honda truck nowadays. It's so different than it normally yeah. was maybe just six, seven years ago. Like yeah. very friendly, open. Um, you see the guy smiling, having a good time, and all of the people that work within the Honda racing team are good dudes. Yeah, it just seems like it's more of a like a family atmosphere now than it ever has been. Yeah, it's it's, and I think Lars is a big part of that. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, the culture that is there now is is awesome, and I think what that does to me is it it gives everyone the chance of freedom to to kind of. Hey, maybe we should do this, or maybe we should do that. It's not so uh, kind of black and white, and it's just fun. Like it's you want to go to the races, you want to go work with these guys because you're you're more of a family. It's more of a friendship than it even is, uh, you know, a working relationship. So, uh, so yeah, I think you know for me being in that super serious environment, and I don't think that was just Honda. Yeah. I think that was across the paddock. Yeah. Uh, so. For me, being in that kind of high stress and always kind of pushing, it just riding didn't wasn't as fun as it always was. And I know it's you don't want to complain about how hard it was, yeah, you know. Yeah. But but what still, you, when I rode again after uh, kind of healing after I stopped riding, I was just like, dude, that was so much fun. Yeah, I had such a good time. And um, I guess it's kind of like the job if you still like their bike talk to Tedesco about this as well. It's like, it's like I get the best of both worlds. I get paid to ride a dirt bike and I don't have the pressure yeah. to try to go fast. Like yeah. if I don't feel it on one day, I don't have to do that. Yeah. So being a test guy isn't such a bad deal. Yeah, and you get to ride the best motorcycles, right? right? I mean, I think it's one of the hard parts about the transition from being a factory racer to like working on your own bike yeah. you know and and riding stock bikes you've been used to riding bikes that are tailored specifically to you and so it's a kind of a strange concept the first time you gotta like change your own oil and wash your own bike or um even loading up going to the track it's like <laughs> it's, you're so used to just showing up and kind of like doing your job and leaving and um and so i think it's to make that transition is a little bit difficult but for me the testing kind of allowed me to make that transition smoother. Yeah. So now it's like I enjoy washing my bike and taking care of my stuff at home and loading up and meeting my buddies at the track. You know, yeah. it's 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 taken me back to kind of like more of a grassroots. That's really cool. Um, last question. We're here at Ironman 2025 Honda CR 450R. What is probably your favorite thing about this bike um, from the previous version? I mean, it's easy for me. I think um, corner entry uh, is, is so much more calm. You know, I think in our private previous generations, you always want to go straight. Yeah. You never really want to lean the bike. You're always looking for something to kind of bank off of or, or something to use to turn. It's like point and shoot, point and shoot, because when you're on the lean, it's uh, nervous and you just really don't know what the bike's going to do. And so for me, just being able to like, here at Ironman, I, able to make my own lines you know the last couple of days and it's like i can just move around the track and create constant momentum i don't have to worry about you know this corner is flat i can't turn off anything what am i going to do it's like i can trust the motorcycle on the lean and i think that's something we've really really missed in the last uh, little bit so i'm probably most excited about that all right thank you sir cool thanks